Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, and welcome to a truly efficient settlement build. The point of this video is to show you how to build a settlement that is completely self sustaining, that generates the maximum number of caps, the maximum number of food, the maximum number of fertilizer and scrap possible based on vanilla in-game mechanics. This build does not use any mods and so it can be replicated on consoles. Now, um, this is not a beautiful settlement. I didn't do it with any decorations. It's not meant to be beautiful. The entire point is that it's, it's efficient. It is the best way to build a settlement to give you max resources with the lowest cost. And I have found that the key to an efficient settlement is to have 24 settlers. If you watch my previous settlement builds, you know that I like to have 36 settlers, but I came up with that number based on my own character's personal charisma limit, not based on an efficient settlement. After running the numbers and doing the math, I've discovered that an efficient settlement has 24 settlers, and I'll go through all of the different, uh, the different uh, uh, resources right now. So I have 24 crops, and the reason I have these in multiples of six is because each settler can farm only up to six food each person. Now I don't mean six individual crops, I mean six foods. So it would be it would be six mute fruit plants or 12 carrot pl uh, plants, depending on how much food the plant generates. Since each settler can farm up to six food, it would be a waste to have a settlement with less than 24 people because you'd, uh, you wouldn't be maximizing the efficiency of, that, of each farmer. So 24 people divided by six is four. So you have four settlers assigned for food to food production. That leaves 20 different settlers that you can assign to a variety of different tasks. Huh? So I've built this strange contraption that I know is ugly. It's not designed to be pretty or beautiful, but it's basically an elevated platform for all of my bars. I have 11 different bars. Each bar generates 40 happiness, but the way happiness works is happiness is divided by your total number of settlers. So each bar produces 40 happiness divided by 24 in this case. So to get the maximum number of happiness, you have to have a whole lot of bars. So having these 11 bars brings my happiness up to like 98 point something. Now to get that final couple of points of happiness, I have gorillas. Gorillas are the pets that give you the most happiness in the game. Now let me pop open the workshop here and you can see exactly. They also happen to produce the most defense of any other pet in the game. I believe the junkyard dogs only give you eight defense, whereas the gorillas give you 10. So they give you the most happiness of any other pet and the most defense of any other pet, making them the most efficient uh, pet to have. Now there is a glitch with the gorilla cage. And that is that once you catch a gorilla, the animation of the cage doesn't actually close the door. You can still tell when you've caught a gorilla because it'll start to spark. You'll see some sparks flying, but the door will still be open. So once you see the sparks start to fly, open the cage anyway, and what'll happen is the door will close and then it'll open and the gorilla will come out. So just another Bethesda glitch with Wasteland Workshop. Uh, but it does work, you can get gorillas, and they offer the most defense and the most happiness. So, uh, with the gorillas and my 11 bars, that brings me up to exactly 100 happiness. Now, the nice thing about the gorillas is they're incredibly efficient on defense as well. I just showed you that each one gives you 10 defense, so since I only need 24 defense to get my maximum happiness bonus from defense, all I had to do was plop down one machine gun turret to bring me to 25 defense. Um, this was the closest and most efficient way I could get to 24. Now, if you get attacked, you're gonna wanna have more defense than this, no doubt. But it, when speaking truly about efficiency from a happiness perspective, all you need is 24 defense. So the most efficient way to go about it is two gorillas and one small machine gun turret. I experimented with uh, putting this entire settlement into one encased enclosure, so I put this concrete wall around it, but I don't like walls, and I never build walls with any of my settlements because enemies can just ignore walls. Walls are not 
they don't they, they just don't function well enemies can teleport through them some enemy spawn points are actually inside walls and even after i built this wall when i when this settlement got attacked the death claws just teleported inside the walls so this is a failed experiment and this goes this uh, reinforces my idea that walls are actually a waste when it comes to settlement building if you want to truly defend your settlement from attack just overwhelm the enemies with firepower vaporize them before they can even move and that way Way your settlement is truly defended. I created this uh, elevated house, so I created this platform here, and it's got this house here with 12 beds in it, and then you go on up the platform, and here's the second house with 12 beds in it. And settlers do actually use it. They'll climb up the stairs and they'll sleep. So it does actually work. So uh, you don't have to build a settlement this way. I'm not suggesting that you make something as compact and uh, Orwellian as this settlement. But this is just a demonstration on how to make the, per the, the most efficient, perfect settlement. Now let's talk a little bit about Brahmin. So uh, I have three Brahmin that are over here. And Brahmin generate fertilizer. But uh, their fertilizer production is capped to three each day, and each Brahmin can only generate one. So it doesn't make any sense to have more than three Brahmin per settlement. Um, Brahmin also increase the efficiency of your food production, so having more bra a Brahmin will increase more food. But the way the game works, you're actually restricted on the amount of food, scrap, and fertilizer that is stored in your workshop. If your settlement generates more than that, your settlers actually stop working. So the remaining nine settlers I have assigned to these scavenging stations, and uh, there's no daily cap that I know of on how much scrap settlers can produce, but there is a cap on how much that you can store in your workshop. So one of the keys to an efficient settlement like this is you need to go back to your workshop every few days and empty it. That's the only way that your settlement will continue to produce resources for you. If you don't empty it, then after a few days, your settlement will stop producing scrap, food, fertilizer, and water once you get to a certain point within your workshop. Now, caps are different. There's no cap limit inside your workshop, but there is a 50 cap limit each day. So these bars, complete with the happiness bonus from having 100 happiness, generate exactly 50 caps a day. Now, many will come to me and say, well, Oxhorn, I don't like having bars in my settlements. I don't like having, you know, 11, 12, 13, 17 bars in my settlements. And that's fine. You know, there are many settlements I have built where I don't have all of these bars. But when we're talking about an efficient settlement, bars are going to be the most efficient shop because they not only generate happiness, but they also generate a lot of caps. Um, I experimented uh, with having a bunch of weapon shops here because the tier three weapon shop produces the most caps in the game of all other shops, but they don't produce any happiness. But I found that in order to get the happiness that I needed from my bars, I simultaneously met my daily cap production limit with 11 bars. So there was no need to have armor merchants or weapon merchants. Now there is a mod that you can find on the ne Nexus for PC users that you can install to remove the workshop uh, resource cap restriction. If you install that mod, then there's no maintenance required. You can set it and forget it. Your settlement will continue to produce resources. You don't have to come back and empty your workshop ever again. Um, but uh, that mod is only available to PC users right now. I hope it'll be available to console users in the future. Um, but the way the base vanilla game works is you are capped from many resources, so you will have to empty out your settlement every other day or so. This is my settlement happiness calculator. I created this free tool for you all to use, and with this calculator, you can calculate your own settlement's happiness and resource production, and uh, this is free for anyone to use. So I created this using results from my own video experiments and from data that had been decompiled from the Fallout 4 game by other gamers, and all of that data is available online. I link to it in this document. So the way this works is these green cells right here can be filled out by you, and you can put in any numbers you want. So let's say I had 24 settlers, but I only had 15 beds. Our happiness would be down to 92.5. Now, I updated this calculator recently over here in column H. This gives you all sorts of good stuff, including uh, the caps produced per store 
with all of the subtotals down here. So based on, um, let me put this back. I've got 24 settlers, 24 food. This is the settlement that I just produced. 24 of every single resource, 11 large bars, two gorillas, three Brahmin, and 10 assigned, or nine, that should be nine, nine settlers assigned to scavenging stations equals 100 happiness, 18 scrap produced each day, 50 caps produced each day, three fertilizer and 10 extra bonus food produced each day. I have found that these are the maximum number of resources that you can produce with an efficient settlement. Yes, you can have more settlers at your settlement and have a whole bunch more bars to get your happiness up to 100, but the daily in-game caps kind of restrict the amount of the amount of resources you could have each day. So here are the storage caps here in red. Your workshop is limited to the following, and this number is going to be different for each player based on their total settler population and their happiness. But with a settlement of 24 and a happiness of 100, my settlement is capped to 34 food, 11 water, 220 scrap, and 10 fertilizer. Once these numbers are reached in my workshop, all of my settlers stop producing resources, even if they are not the ones who originally produce them. Let's say I go and I get a bunch of scrap and I dump it in my workshop. If, if just the sheer number of individual scrap items goes beyond 220, my scavenging stations stop producing scrap. So this is why I said earlier that you should empty your workshop of all resources as often as possible so that your settlement will continue to produce resources. Now, in addition to your workshop storage having a cap, you're also capped on daily production. So if you look in this, uh, this light green section right here, I share with you the two production caps that we have been able to find in the game code. The first is on fertilizer. You're capped at three fertilizer each day. And the second is on caps. You're capped on 50 caps per day. So it doesn't make any sense to have a settlement with 50 people each assigned to a workshop because the most caps that settlement will ever be able to create is 50. So to make an efficient settlement, you have only the shops necessary to reach this 50 number, and then after that, assign your settlers to something else, like scavenge. There's no production cap on scrap. So, you could theoretically have an almost unlimited amount of scrap produced each day, but there is a storage cap on scrap, and the storage cap is based on your settlement happiness and your settlement population. So even if I had, uh, a, you know, 300 scrap being produced each day, after one day I would hit my storage cap, and then that would be it. As it is, based on this setup, I'm producing 18 scrap a day. I'm getting my 50 caps produced each day. I'm getting my fertilizer produced each day. So for this setup, you would want to visit your settlement every day and empty the workshop because you've already hit your fertilizer cap. If you're not concerned with fertilizer, then you would want to visit your settlement every three days to empty everything in it because on the third day, you'll hit your food production cap. Now, scrap is a different story. I only have 18 scrap being produced, so it's gonna be quite some time before I hit my scrap storage cap, but the reason that I list this as an efficient settlement is because in order to generate more scrap, I would need way more settlers assigned to my settlement, but that would dilute the total number of happiness, which would in turn limit the amount of scrap that I produce, because the amount of scrap you produce is magnified by your settlement happiness. So to get the best out of it, you need 100 happiness. But to get 100 happiness, you're gonna need more bars. So as your settlement population increases because you want to get more scrappers, you're gonna to have to assign half of them at least to bars, which is gonna mean that you need to get even more settlers. And this kind of grows exponentially to the point where you have a settlement with 100 to 150 settlers, half of which are assigned to bars, just so that you can get enough happiness to get to 100 happiness, and the rest assigned to scrap so that you can meet your storage cap in your workshop, which of course is just not really efficient. So it, as far as I'm concerned, the best way to get an efficient settlement is to have 24 settlers because that meets at least two of these daily caps, your, your caps cap, your fertilizer cap, and you're one third of the way on, on your way to your food cap. And the only cap that you're not even close to getting each day is your scrap cap. Now you could have a uh, settlement just with scavengers to produce scrap for you. But I'll show you what that does. So let's say you've got 24 settlers, but you have zero large bars, and you put all of them 
into scavenging. So let's put 20 here because we have to have four going to food. You see that our target happiness goes all the way down to 81.7 and that, that affects our scrap production. Now it does go up to 33, even though we added 10 more scavengers to production. We only gained 15 additional scrap produced each day. That's less than half of what we have. We were at 18 scrap produced each day. So the happiness of the settlement actually goes towards improving your scrap production. Now if you wanted to have a settlement that was dedicated just to producing scrap and you didn't care about happiness, you could have as many settlers as you wanted uh, with all of them assigned to producing scrap and you wouldn't have a daily budget limit and you'd, become, you'd come that much closer to getting your scrap limit which as you can see by this calculation is 220. And that would mean that you'd have to go back and visit your settlement every day or every other day to empty it of scrap so that it can continue to produce scrap. So there you go, a couple different ways of going about this. You can try to maximize your happiness as I did to give you the maximum scrap production, which means that it's gonna take a while for you to hit your scrap storage cap, or you could forget about happiness and just dump all of your users into scrap production, ignoring your happiness which is going to level out at around 80 or 81 or so and it's going to give you more scrap which is going to get you closer to hitting your scrap cap or you could avoid all of this and install the mod that removes your workshop resource cap limit and then you don't have to worry about it you can just set it and forget it your settlements will continue to produce all of the resources forever so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There's a neat little video for you. I'm on a completely different character, which is why I have my Country Crossing settlement free. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to just see what does a truly efficient settlement look like? And this is what it looks like. 24 people with 24 food, water, and defense. With 24 beds, you get 100 happiness. Two gorillas, three Brahmin, and maximum caps, fertilizer, and extra food production. If every single settlement that you had was like this, you would be maximizing the total number of resources that you could ever possibly produce with the settlement infrastructure that Fallout 4 has. So there you go, I hope this was useful. I have links in the description of this video to mods that you can use to uncap your resource budget and to other documents that you can take a look at to confirm my results or to run your own experiments. Please check out my settlement happiness calculator which has all of these calculations inside of it so that you can run your own calculations to build your own efficient settlements. Please subscribe for more Fallout 4 content and thank you so much for watching.